Adorama TV presents Getting the Shot with Corey Rich. You're listening to Adorama TV. Adorama is the place that I go to buy all of the equipment that I use in the field, whether that's still photography equipment, video equipment, tripods, stands, lighting equipment. Bottom line, they're my one source for anything photographic, video, or lighting. Today, you are tuning in to listen to a basics of time-lapse photography. It's really going to be the overview of time-lapse photography. If you're interested in kind of that higher level which is motion control heads, sliders, uh, HDR time-lapse. Tune in down the road because we'll do an advanced time-lapse photography video. What it really starts with is the fundamental question is, what is time-lapse photography? Time-lapse photography allows you to take an extended duration of time and compress it into a short duration of time. And let me give you an example of that. You've often watched movies where you see the sun rise, and we all know that it takes an hour for the sun to go from sort of high in the sky to beautiful colors and then eventually over the horizon. But in the movie, it looks like four seconds. That's a time lapse. It's taking a long duration of time and compressing it into a short duration of time. Now you can use time lapses to, to show anything from sunrises to sunset, star trails in the sky, uh, clouds moving across the sky. You can even do really radical things like show the changing of seasons. And what I'm going to do today is provide the fundamentals of how do you do that with your Nikon D800 camera. Now, I'm a Nikon ambassador. I use Nikon cameras, Nikkor lenses, but you can do this with many other cameras. It's really just about figuring out what equipment, accessories you need in order to do it. Because Nikons are the only cameras on the market that have an intervalometer built into the camera. And that's a pretty cool attribute of the cameras. It's just less equipment to bring into the field. So really there's three ways to build a time lapse. One is you take your video camera and you press record and you let it roll for hours or 45 minutes, an hour, several hours if you have tape or memory to do exactly that. And then when you get back into post-production, you take that long stretch of video and you compress it in the timeline, you ramp it in the timeline to be three seconds. That's the most basic form of doing that. You can do that with your Nikon camera. You put it in video mode, you press record, you record for the entire record cycle, and then later you accelerate that in your timeline. The next way to do it on a Nikon camera, newer Nikon DSLR bodies, is you can actually use time-lapse photography mode. Now what time-lapse photography mode does is the camera will actually take individual pictures, you tell it how often you want it to take that picture, and then the camera builds a video for you within the camera. So now this is important. You do not get the individual still photographs at the end of using time-lapse photography mode, but what you do get is a video file that's the correct duration of time that you can put into your final video edit. My chosen method is actually using an intervalometer. Now in Nikon cameras, it's built into the camera. I'm going to be demonstrating this on the Nikon D800, but the interval timer shooting mode allows you to actually decide how often you want to take a picture and you get to keep the individual still images in the aftermath of building your time-lapse sequence. First decision that you need to make actually is do you want raw files or do you want JPEGs? I, uh, I'm always a believer in go for the raw files, make sure you have enough memory. Memory's cheap these days. Um, I'm using SanDisk Extreme Pro cards, whether that's CF cards or SD cards. Make sure you have memory because the worst thing that can happen is you're in the middle of the time lapse and the camera just runs out of space. So I go for raw files. Of course, that means in the aftermath, I can batch process those raw files. I have the most control, the most information to work with. Now, the next thing that's very important to understand about shooting a time lapse is the camera really needs to be locked off or stable. A chintzy tripod is not going to do the job. I use Manfrotto tripods and heads. And I use a fairly beefy tripod, in fact, when I'm shooting time lapses. I, oftentimes I'll set the tripod fairly low to the ground, or I'll even weight the tripod to make sure that it's not blowing in the wind. And in fact, I'll take the camera strap off of my Nikon D800 just to make sure it's one less thing that's blowing in the wind and can actually affect the camera. I don't want the camera moving subtly because you'll see that in the aftermath. 
Now, one of the most common mistakes people make when they first go and shoot a time lapse is they leave their camera in autofocus mode. And every time the camera goes to take a picture, the camera searches for focus and sometimes gets lost in focus or focuses on a cloud or a bush in the foreground. You're going to pre-focus your camera and then you're gonna put the camera into manual focus mode. You can do that on your lens or you can do that on the camera body. The next decision that you're going to make is around exposure. Do you wanna be in manual exposure or an auto exposure mode? Now the advantage to manual exposure, for example, when shooting in bright sun, is you know what that exposure is. The clouds are moving through the sky, big puffy clouds. You expose for the highlights and you just let the camera rip and the camera never gets fooled by going in and out of shadows. Now during a sunrise or a sunset, the advantage to a manual mode is that it allows the sky to go from bright to dark or from dark to bright. Now on the other hand, the beauty of an automated mode is that it allows you to shoot a time lapse, for example, that transitions from daylight to sunset to the moon coming up and then seeing star trails in the sky. Let's have a look at the back of the Nikon D800 and actually go into the menu and have a look at how we uh, set the intervalometer on the camera. You're gonna go into the camera menu. There's the interval timer shooting mode. So it says choose start time and I really like this feature. This means we can do it now or we can actually tell the camera to start shooting the time lapse in three hours, two hours, four hours. So, okay, so we're gonna say now, and then you have a selection right now, which is the interval. And so it's really broken down by hours, minutes, seconds. Now, when I roll over to the next screen, it's asking me to select the number of frames that I actually want to capture. So I wanna max out, I wanna shoot as many pictures as this camera will allow me to shoot. And on Nikon cameras, that's 999 photographs. Um, with using the built-in intervalometer. And every time it takes a picture, I want it to shoot one photograph. And if you're wondering why would you ever want it to shoot more than one photograph, you're gonna have to watch the advanced time-lapse photography segment that we'll, we'll do later in the year. And so that means we're gonna do 999 photographs. Now, if you want it to shoot more than 999 photographs at once, which is what the internal intervalometer in the Nikon D800 allows you to do, then you would actually just buy the MC36A multifunction remote cord. And this allows you to shoot an infinite number of images in any of your time-lapse sequences. One more piece of equipment, and it gives you a little bit more control. I find nine times out of 10, 999 photos allows me to achieve uh, whatever I'm trying to achieve. So then I scroll over and it says start, and I say on, okay. Boom. It's taking pictures. So now that's the beauty. Every five seconds, or, yep, it's taking another picture. So that sound. And one thing that I'll oftentimes do is I'll make sure that I hang out near the camera for a couple of minutes to just make darn certain that it's actually working. I don't want to walk away after it shot one frame and realize, uh-oh, hours later, it's not actually shooting. So one of the other things that I'll do actually when I'm finally ready to start the intervalometer and start creating my time-lapse sequence is I'll actually turn off the LCD display on the back of the camera so that every time I take a picture, it's not lighting up and burning battery power. Battery power is something that you really need to be conscientious of if you're doing long time lapses in cold weather. One of the other decisions that you should make is consciously understand, are you going to be editing your final video in 24 frames per second or 30 frames per second? Because what that plays into is how you calculate how many frames you need. So here's just simple math. If you shoot 24 frames, 24 raw photographs using the intervalometer, and you're editing in a 24 frame timeline, 24 frames per second, that means you have one second of time-lapse material. If you shoot 48, that means you have two seconds of time-lapse material at the actual standard rate. So I'm a guy that always errs on the side of caution. I'll shoot excessive number of photographs so that I can decide whether I want to ramp or accelerate that time lapse or slow the time lapse down. The other reality is sometimes the light doesn't work or the tripods get shaken. My advice is do not just shoot enough frames to slot into what you think you're going to need. If you think you need two seconds of time lapse, don't shoot 48 frames. Shoot 999 frames is my advice because oftentimes you're very surprised by where the best portion of the time-lapse actually occurs. 
Now there's cool apps that you can download on your iPhone that help you do that calculation if you're not good at arithmetic like myself. If there's one takeaway, it's get out there and experiment. Don't expect the first time lapse that you shoot to be perfect because as you've realized listening to me uh, pontificate here, there's a lot of things that you need to remember correctly. And if you screw up one, it screws up your time lapse. So that's important to remember. Get out there, experiment, have fun, go to beautiful places. Use that as your excuse so that you can capture cool time lapse sequences. And when you nail one, please send it to me via email. Send me a link. I would love to check it out. Adorama TV produces episodes like this all the time. So be sure to go to Adorama TV's YouTube channel as well as iTunes channel so that you don't miss a single episode. I use Adorama.com as the source for all of the tools that I use to be creative, from cameras to lighting to microphones to tripods. So if you're looking for those tools to go out and create time lapses, you know where to go, Adorama.com. I'm Corey Rich. Thanks for listening, and uh, please tune in next time. great looking prints at low cost, be sure to visit our easy to use online printing service. Adorama Pix has professionals who treat your images with the utmost care that you can count on. For a quick turnaround on photos, cards, or albums, use adoramapix.com.